The purpose of this video is to introduce a new term, stratification, and to show that stratification is a kind of conditioning. Now we're going to be using stratification as a tool, and so we need to know that it is a kind of conditioning so that we're able to use that tool correctly. Now just as a reminder, previously we talked about conditioning on a variable and you were asked to try to practice thinking about conditioning on a variable and to be able to envision it uh, very fluently in your mind. And you'll remember that to condition on a variable, you first break your problem into levels of the conditioning variables. And if you have more than one conditioning variable, then you are breaking the problem down into levels of the joint distributions of those conditioning variables. And then after you've done that, you estimate the association between your exposure and your outcome variable within each of the levels created by those conditioning variables. And finally, if the associations between exposure and outcome are similar in each of those levels, then you can combine the associations of the exposure and the outcome in each of those levels into an adjusted estimate of the association. Now, if you aren't clear about that, you should go back and review the videos about that. Now, the first part of this process where we break the problem into levels of the conditioning variables this has a technical term. This is called stratifying. So to learn the terms, the verb form is to stratify. And the nouns include strata, which is plural, and stratum, which is singular. And strata and stratum refer to the different levels of the conditioning variables. And another noun is stratification, which refers to the act or the process of stratifying. So previously, we've been describing this as breaking the problem into levels of the conditioning variables. But what we were talking about there was stratification. Now let's think back to our example of conditioning on a variable. We were looking at the association between coffee, drinking, and COPD, and we had an idea that our analysis would be confounded by smoking. And we saw that within our DAG, that we had this backdoor path between COPD and coffee that passed through smoking and the tendency to use stimulants. And we decided that we would condition on smoking in order to block this backdoor path and therefore take out the confounding in the association between coffee and COPD. So we follow the process of conditioning on a variable, the first part of it, which was breaking the problem into levels of the conditioning variables, which we now know is called stratifying. So what we did was we stratified by smoking. So what we decided to do was, is we moved all of the smokers over to the left side and we moved the non-smokers to the right side and it looked like this. And then the next step in conditioning on a variable was that we estimated the association of exposure and disease within levels of the conditioning variable, which in this case is smoking. And so you can see that down here. This is the estimation of the association between coffee drinking and COPD in the smokers. The odds ratio was 1.0. And this is the estimation of the association between coffee drinking and COPD in the non-smokers. The odds ratio is also 1.0. And then the final thing was that if the association was similar in each level, we could combine the associations of exposure and disease in the different levels of the conditioning variable and create an adjusted association of exposure and disease. And so here we had, we had exactly the same associations of exposure and disease in these two levels. And so we could combine them together into an adjusted association which because they were the same in both levels came out to be the same uh, number. And so this is the adjusted odds ratio. So this is the association between coffee drinking and COPD adjusted for smoking. Now the point that I want to make in this video 
is that the conditioning actually is completed as soon as we complete step number two. We don't actually have to do the third step, which is to calculate the adjusted odds ratio, which is found by combining the odds ratios in each of the strata of the conditioning variable. If we think back to this step, the odds ratios that we see here and here within the non-smokers and the smokers, they have already blocked the backdoor path in our DAG. If you think back to this picture, which we saw in a previous video, this is a picture of the analysis being done within each stratum of smoking. Here are the smokers, and here are the non-smokers. And the way that we are blocking this backdoor path between COPD and coffee is by taking out all of the variability in smoking by limiting the analysis of the association between our exposure, in this case coffee, and our outcome, in this case COPD, to the stratum that only has smokers in it. And the same thing down here, there's only non-smokers. Now, let's think a little closer. Why is it that we have this kind of confounding by smoking? Well, if you remember back to the beginning, the problem we had in the beginning was that we had more smokers here in the coffee drinking group than we had in the non-coffee drinking group. And according to our DAG, we think that this difference in the number of smokers that we find in the coffee drinking group compared to the not coffee drinking group is due to a systematic structure in the way the causes and effects of reality are put together. And so when we see this greater number of smokers among the coffee drinkers compared to the non-coffee drinkers, this is not simply a random effect. This isn't just by chance. This is actually, according to our idea of the causal structure of reality, due to the fact that we have this variable down here, tendency to use stimulants, which is both a cause of coffee and a cause of smoking. And it's because of that that we need to take out that relationship between smoking and coffee from the structure of the way we're building our model in order to be able to see the true association between coffee and COPD. Because otherwise, we're always going to have this problem, which is that there are going to be more smokers over here in the coffee drinkers compared to the not coffee drinkers. And because, according to our idea about reality, smoking is a cause of COPD, then we are naturally, in a systematic way, going to see a higher odds of COPD among the coffee drinkers compared to the non-coffee drinkers. And that's exactly what we saw in our odds ratio here. We found the odds were 73% higher among the coffee drinkers compared to the non-coffee drinkers. And so it was only when we took out that variability in smoking by stratifying our analysis that we were able to see the association between coffee drinking and COPD, which was in fact that there was no association between coffee drinking and COPD. Now the main point that I want to make here is that I want you to remember that stratifying is actually a kind of conditioning. When you stratify an analysis, you are conditioning the analysis on the variable that you are using to stratify on. Now, you will remember that we saw that if the associations between exposure and outcome are similar or the same within levels of the stratifying variable, then we can combine them into an adjusted association between exposure and disease. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, we could actually we could actually think about the results in this way. This is perfectly fine. We could say, for example, that we found no association between coffee and COPD among the smokers, and that we found no association between coffee and COPD among the non-smokers. This would be perfectly correct. So why is it that we want to create an adjusted effect estimate? Well, the reason has to do with the precision with which we can estimate 
the association between exposure and disease. And we haven't started talking about precision yet. We will get to it. But the general idea is that you want the largest group of individuals in which to estimate the association between exposure and disease because you get a clearer idea about that association. But the reason that I'm emphasizing that stratification is a kind of conditioning is that we're going to learn that stratification is a very powerful tool in our analysis toolkit. And so you need to remember that stratification is a kind of conditioning because stratification follows the same rules that we have for conditioning. For example, if you condition on a variable which is a descendant of both the exposure and the outcome, there's a chance that you are going to open a backdoor path. If the backdoor path is blocked by that variable, which is a collider. And so it's possible that when you condition on a variable, you can actually induce confounding between exposure and disease. And because stratification is a kind of conditioning, there's a possibility that if you stratify your analysis on a variable, which is a descendant of both exposure and disease, that you could induce the same kind of bias between exposure and disease. But we're definitely going to be using stratification. And so the main point here to remember is that stratification is a kind of conditioning. And so before you stratify on a variable, you need to analyze its position inside your DAG to make sure that stratifying on that variable will not induce any bias into your model.